Hey everyone, thanks for joining Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and today me and my friends will be playing through Divinus. This is a brand new game coming to Game Found from Lucky Duck Games. It is a 2 to 4 player game that takes roughly 45 minutes to an hour to play, and is a competitive legacy style game. And with legacy, what that means is that it is going to be, as you play through the game, you're going to permanently change different components of the game, adding stickers to the board, the tiles, to your player tuck boxes, to the dice, and all kinds of other things, including the rule book, that are going to permanently change the game as you play through it. So with this one, you are going to be playing one of the demigods, and you're going to choose one of them, and you will try to gain favor of one of the different pantheons that are competing. We have the Greek gods trying to defend their land from the Nordic gods that have basically destroyed theirs and want to take over this new land. So you have these huge groups of gods clashing, and we're right in the middle of it making tough decisions. And the game is also going to come with an app that you will have, and it's going to give you narration on each one of the scenarios. And then as you go through the scenarios, completing different quests and different things, you're going to input that into the app and it's going to give you more information or choices you're going to have to make and that are going to impact later scenarios as you play through them. So a really interesting piece of equipment with this. Now, once you've completed this in the campaign, the game is not completely wasted. There are two other modes that are going to be included. The Eternal mode, which will allow you to continue to play the game in, in different ways. There isn't a lot that we have information on at this point on that, so I can't really elaborate any more on that. And then there's also another mode that's considered or called a standalone mode, so I'm not sure on that either. But it also talks about introducing new myths, new, narr uh, new narrative stories, and all kinds of different things. So some really cool options once you've completed the game as well. So in this video, we'll be playing through Scenario 2. We played through Scenario 1 off-camera as that just kind of introduces us to the game where Scenario 2 is going to introduce a number of do, uh, new features to the game as well. And it's a little bit more exciting with a, with a brand new battle of two massive gods. We have Thor on the Nordic side and Ares on the other side. And depending on some of the choices that we make throughout the game, only one of those gods is going to live through this scenario and the other one will die. So we'll see which one one can pull it off and which one is not so lucky. So as always, if you find these videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button, subscribe to my channel. It's one of the easiest ways you can support channels like mine so we can continue to grow and produce this content. If you want to stay updated on all my videos, also consider that bell so you get notifications anytime I release new stuff. So let's head to the table and we'll see how this one plays. All right, so for this video, we're going to be playing scenario two. We already played through scenario one. And that one just kind of introduced us to our demigods. We had to choose which one we're going to play. So I'm playing Bjorn, or I named him my character Bjorn. And I'm playing kind of a Viking-ish kind of guy. You're Damn. not sure? No, I'm not sure. <laughs> we're, we're undecided yet because we're, we're still kind of going towards our different faction paths. I picked a yellow-looking dude. What's your name? His name is Lufus. <laughs> Apparently Lance can't say it. So. No. <laughs> Luthless. Okay. I am playing Fife. Uh, well, I named my character Fife. Um, and I'm going to say it's probably just a Greek demigod. So. Oh, so you're going for the Greek. Yeah. Oh, okay. we know where she lies. Yeah. Right? <laughs> now we know. Right. So, and then we'll have uh, displays on the screen to show you what our maps look like during game one. Uh, it was pretty close overall. Um, we have a breakdown, which I can... We can show. So according to the Greek gods, um, Courtney has the highest favor. Tam falls right in the middle. And then I have the lowest amount of favor there. On the Viking side, I have the highest favor with Tam in the middle again. And Courtney on the bottom. And then finally for the combined total value of those two, I have the highest currently at nine points versus Tam who is at seven. And Courtney who is last at six. But it's still close. I'm so, all about the balance. You are very <laughs> balanced right now. So moving into scenario two, where we already set up all of the different things, which it's instructed us to place down a bunch of new stickers in the rule book and all that stuff. And uh, one thing that I did want to point out is that those stickers are going to be permanent versus the ones that will go onto your dice are actually going to be ones that you can remove and reuse, which they started developing in one of their previous games that they, they had that hasn't launched or hasn't uh, been released yet from production. 
but it'll be a really interesting thing so you'll be able to modify your dice throughout the game and then change those out uh, in between games and whatnot as well so Tam's got a whole bunch of <laughs> stickers on his already so with that being said we're ready to move into the game Tam will be the first player and we're going to go ahead and start by rating our dice so we're going to go and roll all of our dice No stickers for me. No stickers. All right, Tam, it is you to start us off. <laughs> so, and basically throughout the game, what our goal is, is we are going to be building our own map from the tiles that are in the center there. We'll be purchasing with our ready dice and trying to meet different requirements. For this particular one, we're looking for three different quests. Two of them will be based on the forge or the two forges that are out there for artifacts and the dice. And then we'll also have a third that specifies sacred locations. And then at the end of the scenario, we're also going to get a bunch of points based on our different territories that we have grouped together, which we'll go into as we, we cover that at the end of the video. I go for this one. Whoa, right off the bat. That's, that's you need a little bit more. Oh, is it? I, Did you? <laughs> you I missed. Three more. You I'll do this three. one. Okay, you can do that. I wanted six. Okay. Nice. From this angle, it looked like a six. I got I you. forget I'm upside down. You are upside down. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Courtney, it's over to you. All right. Um, I think I'm going to take number 10. Okay. Why? Oh, that's my card. Give it back. All right, so oh, so you did that, so we do have to scan that. Right. Yeah, Tim, then give us a read there. Thank you. Ah, the Viking Keep. You arrive at the largest Viking settlement in Greece, built near the picturesque bay that their town is already well established, and protected by a large fortified keep. Welcome, demigod. Enjoy our hospitality. The local community is preparing for war. Warriors pray to Thor and ready their arms for departure, while brave shield maidens strengthen the keep's defenses. In case some Greeks are foolish enough to attack it in their husband's absence. All wise Fife, our ships are ready. We're departing soon. Lead us. Where should we seek glory and rich plunder? Plunder. So lead them to raid a very important rich area. Soon the Viking war party will sail out. The majority of the ships follow yours, but one, manned by the bravest glory seekers. Detach us to join the war under the command of their god's favorite, Bjorn. <laughs> <laughs> I still hold sway. <laughs> Just five. You may, as a free action, immediately explore any tile available on the main board that contains a Viking symbol and does not contain a location sticker. You must use your single highest value ready die to claim this tile. The die value does not need to match the tile's number. If there is no valid tile available or you do not have any ready dice, you do not receive this reward. Okay. I'm going to use my three because that's my highest. Yep. And I'm going to go for that one right there. Yep. Bjorn, apply Viking sticker faction to any tile on your map. You have no tile yeah. on your map. So. Fail. Yep. Pretty much. Sounds like it. All right, uh, then it goes over to me. Um, oops. I completely missed that tile. I didn't even see the sticker. I was just looking at shiny things. <laughs> Take this one. It's a whopper. Ooh, whopper sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to you. Hmm. What do I have? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> your Jedi mind tricks don't work on me. <laughs> Waiting your hand somewhere else. 
<laughs> you know what? I'm going to try this. I choose a potion. Okay. 13. All right. All right. Courtney, back to you. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm going to go for number two. All right. I will do the forge. So I'm going to use two minus one, or one minus two. So I'll get a negative one. That's what I'm doing. I think the first one was right. No, <laughs> definitely not. All right, Dan, back to you. Now you have to rest, so you're going to get. Rest. You'll get this to add to your artifact. Box. My box over. Maybe. There we go. Potion of endurance. And we have to scan that that location as well. So that is location seven. Should I read this? So you. Okay, so then you got that. Wayland's Workshop. Wayland's artifacts are true wonders of craftsmanship. Owning one makes you far, far more powerful. That's creepy. No. Okay. I'm going to get your dice back. Thank you. Uh, Courtney, back to you. Um, I'm actually going to rest, so I'm going to take all of my dice back. Okay. And then... And then we have to replenish, down. so... We need to go all the way down, don't we? Yeah. yeah. Mm. And I will also rest, so I will come up. And then we also have to scan my location, so that is number six. And I'm gonna get one of these. That was your yep. Hephaestus Smithy. Hephaestus's arms and armor are of the highest quality and are filled with empowering magic. Alright, Sam, back to you. Thank you. I want this then. Because I know Courtney was going to take it. She was eyeing it. That's what I said earlier. I need to scan it, do I not? Yes, you do. Because it has a thing on it. So it just, do I? What's the number? It's just number two. Gaia's Holy Forest. You return to the same valley you once visited. Overgrown with Gaia's holy forest, it remains a place of great natural beauty. At first you thought the Greeks had abandoned the place, but as you walk between the trees, you are welcomed by their watchmen. Is it really you, wise Lufius? Welcome back. It turns out the Greeks were still in the valley, but due to the Viking threat, they had secluded themselves deep within their sacred forest. You humble us with your presence. We feel much safer now. We shall organize a great feast to celebrate your arrival, serving all the forest can provide. Mother Gaia was generous, and the feast was an extraordinary event. The priests leading the ceremony praised both you and Fife as champions of the Greek people and their gods. And the gods agreed, granting both heroes their power and blessing. Luthius, refresh... Any number of your exhausted dice. This is con not considered a rest action, and though empty the tile spaces, I'm sorry, though empty tile spaces on the main board are refilled. Okay. Party. <laughs> Fife. Refresh any one exhausted die. This is not considered a rest action, though the empty tile space on the main board is refilled. Have any, so that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow. So, quick. All right. Uh, I'm going to take number six and I'm going to use my sticker die. Whoops. Okay. Oops. We'll do 11. 
And then this is location five. Location 5 for Bjorn. Barbarian settlement. Settlement. Yeah. <laughs> I think this was one you got from the last scenario. The power is mine! You approach the location <laughs> where you advise the barbarians to settle and die. I joke. <laughs> you are greeted with great revelry. Welcome, O oh wise Bjorn. You see their warriors painting their shields and faces with symbols <laughs> praising Ymir. <laughs> Ymir. <laughs> you are hosted in the crude but spacious house of their leader, a giant of a man, who welcomes you with a feast during which a serious argument breaks out among the barbarians. Great one, you see that there is discord among our people. This land, although rich and good for us, is ravaged by war between the locals and warriors from the north. Migrants just like us. Soon we will be forced to join this war, but we fear the gods of both sides. Which warrior god should we follow to victory? Do you follow the unyielding, unyielding Ares, or follow the unstoppable Thor? Thor. Ares it is. <laughs> I'm sorry, I choose Thor for you. Jeez. Thanks. <laughs> Shouting animal-like war cries, barbarian warriors paint the symbol of Thor's hammer on their chests. And foreheads. Thor! And there's some paint for you. <laughs> Soon a strong war band departs, heading towards a nearby Greek town. Uh oh. Bjorn, pick one opponent. They must apply two barbarian faction stickers over two uh, Roman, uh, sorry, Greek faction symbols on their map, covering them. If the selected opponent has one or zero faction symbols on their map, they must cover the symbol they have, if any, then add no further stickers. So we're adding two barbarian symbols? Correct. So so I choose one of you. Correct. And you have to cover up your Greek symbols? Yep. Well, you both only have one. Correct. So I guess I'll go with Courtney. Okay. Excellent choice. Maybe. I don't know. Get this out of here. Possibly. There. Come on, no. All your pretty hands can't pull the sticker off. Well, that's like. It's a prototype. It's <laughs> <laughs> the first one I've had problems with. All right. All right. So it's just the one. All right. And then I placed my thing there. So, yep. Yeah, I think that's it for my turn. So, Tim. Most excellent. Um, hmm. Okay, Courtney. All right, I'm going to take this three. All right. I will spend these on the forge. So one to, for two, and then subtract four from that to give me a negative two. Excellent. Damn, over to you. Okay, that will complete the sacred thing, so we'll have to go do that. Let's see. Places of power. Ooh. Ooh, lot of reading. <laughs> <laughs> Places of power. This mysterious place, radiating with magic, has attracted your attention. As you step into the circle of power, you see Pythia, sitting on the ground meditating. Well met, Lucius. As I warned you, all of Greece is now engulfed in the fires of war. Just as mortal armies clash, Ares fights against Thor. And I think we may see one of them meet their fate very soon. Have you chosen the right side yet? No matter, this bloodshed will end either way, and its survivors will focus on worshipping the gods and building temples in their name in places of sacred power. Places like this one. When the time of peace comes, which pantheon will you worship here? Hmm.
Greek or Nordic? Can't I do both? You can't be on the fence forever. <laughs> oh, yes, I can. <laughs> choose, but choose wisely. Uh, Greek pantheon. I knew you would choose it. <laughs> I have to oppose you. <laughs> As I thought. Ooh, she thought the same. Remember that regardless of who wins the current war, this conflict will continue. Your sympathies may yet change, young one. Here, take this amulet. You will find it useful when honoring the gods in their sacred places. Lucius, your actions have gained you one... Uh, one favor. One favor. A yep. Greek favor. Yep. Lucius, take, take the Pythia's amulet artifact sticker and add it to the designated space on your demigod spot. I believe it's here. There you go. Oh, wait. So what's that one do for you? So Pythia's amulet. Oh, I didn't go on straight. It says, each time you explore a towel with the, I guess... The magic sacred, circle, sacred, sacred, place. sacred place. We roll any number of ready dice. Cool. Any number. I also get Luthius. Take the sticker bearing the worshiper title and add it to the designated space on your demigod box. Well, you might add more than, yeah, I was going to say, you might have you add more than just the uh, three. Oh, you're already thinking that much, huh? Well, we got 12 scenarios. Well, we don't, but <laughs> the game does. All right, oh. that's it. Best. So, Courtney. All ahead. right. Um, I'm going to spend my last three dice for number 12 here. Okay. Well, you're just moving right along there. Holy cow. Phew! <laughs> <laughs> I got just a little baby bat. All right, so I will rest because I have no dice left. Uh, in order to do that, I do have, I have to have you scan that. So that is six. Hephaestus Smithy. Hephaestus's arms and armor are of the highest quality and are filled with empowering magic. Oh, it's my turn. Be able to re roll that one die that you have there if you chose to. I don't choose to. I was just gonna say, I choose no. It's Courtney, over to you. All right, well, I have to rest since I have no die. But... All right, so at this point, we're going to take a few turns off camera, and then we'll be back in about mid-game to see where everybody's at. All right, so after a few rounds, we are back. We have resolved both of the locations. I ended up picking up this location with having four of those purchased, and then I ended up picking up this last location with the quests, as that was the last one available. So I had to place a bunch of stickers out for hidden treasure and uh, trying to find or restoke the fires 
Uh, so those are on the board now, which won't actually take place during this scenario. That'll come place or take place in further scenarios down the road, which we don't have, but we're definitely interested in finding out more about that stuff. All right, so we are moving back in. Tam, it is your turn. It is. Okay, Courtney. All right, I need to rest, so I'm gonna take this. Sorry. No, you're fine. Tim, what are you? Corey? All right, I need number five, so I'm going to take that one. This tile placement. <laughs> Quite seriously. I rest. Are you sure? No. <laughs> That's the problem. I'm not sure. <laughs> So rests. So reasonable that one. Tim, back to you. I'm going to take number three, and that's going to finish off my map. Well, that is going to be the end of the game. All right, so we have to end scenario. Tim, what do we got there? The Great War. Like everyone else in the land of Greece, Gaia and Ymir are preparing for the grand upcoming battle. Let us see which of you helped the most. Right, so then we have to go through Squirt. Which player has the most planes? Alright, so these are, anytime we total up all this stuff, it has to be at least two ter territories that are connected. So, for example, with this one here, I have one plane here, one for a total of, of two there, but it has to count that way. So, which player has the most? So, we count up all of our planes that are connected. I have two. I have nine. Okay. Uh, I think Courtney's got that one. 13. Yep. So Courtney will get the most. Figures. And then Tim, you'll pick up the second most. I'm consistent. <laughs> uh, which player has the most water areas? I have four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. I got one, two, two. Two, two. Okay. All right. So Courtney gets that as well. I'll get the second most. And then mountains. Two. Eleven. I'm seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so Tim gets the first. And second. All right. So then it's which player has the single largest playing area? It's definitely not me. Courtney gets that, and then Tim. I think you're going to pick up second for that because I have two. So I'm sure you can beat me there. Uh, most water would be my four. And then Courtney's definitely got that. So Courtney will get water. And then I will get second. I think Courtney's going to catch up pretty heavy here. And then largest mountain area. Two, four, five, six. Eight. Okay, so Tim gets that. And I will get second. 
Alright. And then the first direct clash of the gods is upon us. An epic battle is sure to ensue. Which player has the most Greek faction symbols? I have two. I have four. I got two. Okay, Courtney, you got that. Uh, which player has the second most Greek symbols? That would be you know, you tie. tie. In case of a tie, select all tied players. So. Okay. Uh, which player has the most Viking symbols? I have one, two, three, four, five. I have four. I've got 200. <gasps> Whoa! You have what, two? Minus 198. And you said you're four, Courtney? Uh, yes. And then you have the two. Okay, so Courtney definitely has second. Definitely. Two armies led by their warrior gods finally meet on the field of battle. It was the bloodiest battle ever witnessed by the young humans. The Vikings' brute force was pitched against the unyielding Greek tenacity. Uh, which player has... Which player has more faction symbols on the faction which they led to battle? In case of a tie, select both players. Uh, which player has more faction symbols? Okay, so Courtney, you led the Greeks, so you have four. four. I have five Vikings, so I, I would be the, the one. Okay. The Viking forces gathered by Bjorn took advantage of their superior numbers to slowly advance forward, pushing the Greeks up against the seaside cliff. It was in this des desperate moment when the battle seemed already decided that tides, the tides turned. Thor fell to his knees after the power powerful strikes of Ares' spear. The battlefield froze as, as all gazed toward... Uh, turn, all gazes turned toward the clash of the gods. The Vikings wavered, seeing such real, almost human fear in the gods' eyes. Triumphant Ares raised his spear for the final fatal blow when his own chest exploded with a fountain of blood. Bjorn had sunk his weapon deep into Ares' heart. <laughs> uh, this ended the great battle. With Ares defeated, the Greeks fled the fields in panic. The first war was over. Remove Ares' god card from the game, placing it back in the scenario box. All right, it's a massive stroke, demigod. I did not expect you to be capable of defeating Ares where I failed. I owe you and thereby name you the fate of Ares. I find it only fitting that you should earn the spoils of your victory. By the right of the victor, take Ares, your uh, helmet, as your own. Uh, so I have to get the Fate of Ares sticker. Uh, so it's this one. And then you can go ahead and click OK. And then I'll probably get Ares Helmet, I think. Yep. Add it to the designated space in the Demigod box on the artifact. Sweet. So this one is each time I you explore a tile with a Viking sets any ready die. Explore. Uh, set any ready die. Pause. What does that mean? Uh, maybe I get to change like the facing of one of the dice that I have ready. <laughs> what else we got? Bjorn, take or keep the first player marker and store it inside your demigod box. You shall be the first player in the next scenario. This concludes the two scenario preview. Cool. Alright, so let's see what the final score is. So on the Greek side, Courtney steps up with first place with 11 points. Tam, you're still at second with 8, and I come in last at uh, 5 points. On the Viking side, I am first with 11. Uh, Courtney, you come in second with 7. And Tam, you also have 7 at third place. For a combined total, Courtney on the top with 18. I have 16 for second place. And Tam, you have 15 for third. So very, very close. And Courtney came out of the gate flying, man. Holy cow. <laughs> Incredible. All right, so that pretty much wraps up 
this playthrough. How did you guys feel about this? Playing through a couple of scenarios now. I actually enjoy it. Yeah, it's really, I like the, the concept of it. It's awesome. Yeah, it's really different. It's uh, I haven't played that many legendary games or legacy games, so it's interesting to see that dynamic. I'm familiar with the fact that they will evolve over time and you're going to be placing stuff. Um, it's cool that the, the dice stickers won't actually be permanent, so that's going to change up uh, throughout some of the other playthroughs that you do because there's three different versions of this game. You have the legacy version, which we're actually playing now, and then once you complete that... It talks about a um, eternity, eternal mode, which then you can continue playing the game after you've completed the campaign. And then there's also a, it talks about a single standalone play with custom myths and gods and quests that give unique setups and fully designed narrative settings. So that sounds really interesting as well. But as far as those are concerned, the rule book that we have is a beta version. And it doesn't talk about that, so I can't really spoil any more on that. But those are definitely things that sound interesting as well. So even after you've completed the game, there's you can still enjoy more of the game. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Tam, always the skeptic. I am. All right. Well, thank you again for joining us. If you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comment section below and we'll do our best to answer them. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch our videos and leave us feedback on them. We do really appreciate it and take into account everything you say to make the best possible videos. Until next time, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.